Hey guys, you're watching BTEC. I'm Basil. I've been working with smartphones for about seven, eight years now, and I don't know the first thing about making an informed buying decision, an ethically informed buying decision, but Gina does. Gina's been researching it for the last couple of weeks, and so we're making this video to help you guys. Now, we're all massive geeks. We want the latest and greatest smartphones, but you also don't want the planet to, well, implode. But can buying a phone have an impact on the planet? Completely it can. So, first off, do you know what goes into your smartphone? Sure. Um, it, there's plastic, there's glass, hopefully Gorilla Glass, um, there's sapphire. Yes. Okay, yeah. fine, not, not really. So, it's about 40% minerals go into okay. your phone. Oh, wow. Yeah, so if minerals come from the ground, which means people have to mine for them. Mm -hmm. And there are four conflict minerals in the world called tin, tantalum, tungsten, and gold. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's a conflict mineral? A conflict mineral is a mineral which uh, the process of its mining funds sort of war and bad stuff. And even the non-conflict minerals still use child labour and don't pay workers and have really bad conditions. Okay. So, but, but this is a massive disclaimer because we don't actually know what goes into your smartphone, whether your smartphone company is sourced from a good mine or a bad mine. Okay. Because the supply chain is so big, you can go to your, say, Apple, Samsung, Sony, and you can say, where do you get your minerals from? They won't know. They won't know where it originates. Where They'll it know where they bought from. it from, yeah. but there isn't necessarily the accountability across the supply chain. Exactly. Okay, so as a consumer, that leaves us pretty disempowered. Yeah. But if we can't really do anything about that, what can we do something about? Aha! We can make sure we're buying a phone that gives workers fair working conditions, right? In theory, yeah. yeah but again, you just don't know. Uh, well, um, I remember a few years ago, Apple was uh, kind of put in the doghouse because Foxconn workers were committing suicide. And like every time you buy any product, you're effectively putting money into that industry and into like the working conditions and everything across the chain. But since then, Apple has said that it's massively improved the like supply chain working conditions. Have they? Well, again, you just don't know. You just don't know. I found an article on the web from, I think it was 1998 when the first iPod was made, and it was talking about factory conditions then for workers, and Apple came out and said, oh, no, 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 we're fixing things. The fact that there's still these questions 10, 15 years down okay. the track, it's like, how? How do we know if things are improving? And I mean, surely they can't be if there's still complaints 15 years but down the track. But we just don't know. So this, again, just leaves me feeling completely disempowered. Almost makes me feel like I should just carry on exactly as I'm being now because nothing I can do will actually make a difference. Okay, there is something you can do. This is not like a really completely dark and dreary video. Okay, So go. as a consumer, you have the power. And it's all about supply and demand. So make sure you're making ethical buying choices. There is one phone company called Fairphone, and it's a Dutch startup, um, and it's committed to making the most ethical smartphone. Okay. Although even it says that's really hard to do. Okay. And it doesn't claim to be completely ethical because right now, it's impossible. So first off, some tips for your smartphone usage. Make sure you're keeping your phone for as long as you can. I know everyone wants to upgrade to the latest phone every year. I totally do. But think about the impact that has. Sell your phone when you're done with it. Don't throw it away. Don't just leave it in a drawer because a phone in a drawer means someone else has to buy a new one. Whereas if they can just buy your old one, then that means that you're actually recycling these elements. If you do break your phone, don't just buy a new one and leave your phone in a drawer. Either sell it or get it fixed. Yeah. So that you're just maximizing your phone usage. Buy based on what's important to you because um, there are companies doing good environmentally, companies doing good with their workers, but then bad in other areas. Yeah. So figure out if you want to buy a new phone, figure out what's important to you, do your research. Um, we've been using ethicalconsumer.org. Yeah. Um, the, the basic thing is free if you want to get like nitty gritty details. Really like, yeah. So overall it's really general, but nitty gritty details you do have to pay for. Yeah. So they're the key take homes. Keep your phone for as long as you can, sell it secondhand when done or get it fixed um, and buy based on your values using ethicalconsumer.org. Thank you, Gina. After eight years in the industry, I know more than I ever did before about smartphones and making informed ethical buying decisions. Yeah. 
Hopefully you guys are appreciating the fact that you do know. If you've got any questions about any of that, let us know in the comments section below. If you like the video, obviously click like. We haven't done a video like this before. If you do have any requests for more videos in this vein, again, comment below. Bye.